What's up and welcome to another edition of Locked On NBA, the biggest stories with the local experts. I'm your host, Jackson Gatlin, also host of Locked On Rockets right here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Today, we'll be joined by Jeff Garcia from Locked On Spurs. The San Antonio Spurs are diving headfirst into the bottom level of a rebuild. They've moved on from DeJounte Murray. Why was it time for the Spurs to move on from DeJounte Murray? What are the expectations for the crop of young guys being brought in, Jeremy Sohan and all the other rookies being brought into this year's Spurs? team plus Manu Ginobili making it into the Hall of Fame. We're going to get there in just a moment after a quick message from my friends over at Rocket Money. Do you know how much subscriptions really cost? Uh, most Americans think they spend around, you know, 80 bucks or so a month on subscription services when the actual total is closer to $200 or more. That's right. You could be wasting hundreds of dollars each and every month on subscriptions that you don't even know about sometimes. Rocket Money is the app that I love using that takes care of that problem for me. It's formerly known as Truebill. The app shows you all your subscriptions in one place and cancels what you don't want or need anymore. Rocket Money can even find subscriptions that you didn't know that you were paying for. You may even find out you've been double charged for certain subscriptions. To cancel a subscription, all you have to do is press cancel, you click the button, and Rocket Money takes care of the rest. You can cancel unnecessary subscriptions with Rocket Money starting today. Go to rocketmoney.com slash locked on. Seriously, it could save you hundreds of dollars per year. That's rocketmoney.com slash locked on. Joining us now is Jeff Garcia from Locked On Spurs. You can follow on Twitter at Jeff G Spurs Zone. Now, Jeff, the Spurs are entering kind of an interesting mm -hmm. period now, you know, yeah. with the organization kind of going just full bore into mm -hmm. a rebuild, which isn't something we've seen, you know, mm -hmm. really in recent memory ever, maybe from the Spurs. Yeah. So I want to start with what were the factors at hand that ultimately led to the Spurs organization deciding to move on from DeJounte Murray and was the return fair value in your eyes? Uh, well, as far as them diving into the deep rebuild, I think they saw the writing on the wall. They were on the cusp of being a middling team. They were right there. It was playing and bounce, playing and bounce for about what four, three, four seasons in a row now. That ain't going to work in the NBA. And they decided to just pull the plug. And what better signal to do that than trading DeJounte Murray? Uh, and believe it or not, and I'll address you know the Murray return in a bit, but they've been pulling the plug way before the Murray trade. People, obviously, that was a big move. But there was the Derek White trade. There was little moves. There was the, uh, the Bryn Forbes to Denver move for draft picks. There was the Thad Young, Drew Eubanks trade to Toronto for draft picks. So they already been had signaling. They just really officially made it big and known when the DeJounte deal got uh, done. So it wasn't too much surprise for me to see them trade DeJounte. Uh, but I know a lot of the Spurs fan base were shocked that that happened. But if you read the read the tea leaves, you, everybody should have seen this coming. As far as the fair value, I, I think the Spurs made out. If their goal is to rebuild, then boy, did they get themselves a haul to jumpstart that rebuild. You know, the multiple draft picks. Um, uh, you know, position themselves uh, to uh, net themselves a good pick in next season's draft or next summer's draft. Uh, so you add the, the Derek White trade, you add the Brent Forbes trade, you add the Thad Young trade, you add the DeJounte Murray trade. That's a lot. That's a big war chest they're going to go into uh, moving forward. So this is the way the Spurs really got themselves to the top years ago, and they're going to have to do it again. It was bottoming out and getting yourself David Robinson, bottoming him out, getting yourself Tim Duncan, getting bold in the draft, moving up to get Kawhi Leonard. There's a common thread here, the draft. That's how the Spurs rebuild. So they're going to try their hand again. I'm looking forward to that uh, Utah Spurs game next season. Who's going to be the worst team on the court? I mean, that's going to be <laughs> hilarious. Like, who's going to do with the most bricks and most missed layups? Because uh, the Spurs now got competition for the race for the number one pick in next summer's draft. And uh, I'm like this. Like, if, if the basketball gods smile on the Spurs and they get the number one pick, great. But I just can't see them getting out of number three. I think if they fall out of number three, let alone number five spot, it's just a disaster and the rebuild is prolonged. We're not going to be surprised to find out that other Spurs get traded. They still have some nice, valuable pieces they can flip. If their goal is to develop a bigger war ch chest of draft picks, uh, the Yaka Pertle would not be surprised if he's dealt by midseason. Josh Richardson would not be surprised if he's dealt uh, before at the end, well, the uh, trade deadline next season. Because, yeah, I mean, I mean, Yaka Pertle, he's already been on record with Austrian media saying that 
I'll finish out my contract, but I don't know if I'm going to stay beyond this. So he's already signaled to the Spurs that he may not be here for the long rebuild and can't blame him. You know, he's still young. He's on the cusp of entering his prime years. Joel Embiid sings his praises every chance he can, calls him the most underrated center in the league. So yeah, he's going to want to test the water. So if you're the Spurs, you say, okay, well, let's see what we can get now. That we're really going to rebuild this. I'm, I'm used to, uh, you know, I'm also old. I've been through two rebuilds in San Antonio's history, so this is not new to me. But I'm looking forward to see the younger Spurs fans are going to experience their first rebuild and see how they handle it. Brace yourself, kids. It's not going to be fun for a couple seasons. That's what we're going through right now in yeah. Houston. There's a lot of Rockets fans that weren't around for other eras of Houston yeah. Rockets basketball. They only knew the James Harden era and all the winning. Yeah. And, and it's it's funny to see fans have to adjust and kind of, you know, temper mm -hmm. their expectations a little bit and change expectations, right. you know, as you're navigating a rebuild. And that's kind of a big key for this next mm -hmm. season for the Spurs, Jeff. What are some of your expectations kind of currently set sure. for the the new crop of players coming mm -hmm. in for the Spurs organization. They're bringing in six rookies this year, a yeah. couple guys on two-way deals. Obviously, mm -hmm. you've got Jeremy Sohan is the big name coming in, ninth overall pick in this past year's NBA draft. What are some of the expectations that you have for him as well as some of the other young guys being brought in like Malachi Branham, Blake Wesley? Um, you know, don't win a lot of games. <laughs> That's why you pay. don't win a lot of games, guys. You know, turn that ball over. Get your draft odds to the 14% you can. That's, I think that is the biggest expectation. I think a lot of the Spurs fan base are also expecting this team to be bad. As far as individual player expectations, uh, I know you mentioned Sohan. I'll get to him in just a few seconds, but we'll start off with KJ Kelvin Johnson. Got paid. He really got paid. Uh, so we're going to see if the Spurs are really going to see him as a key in the just, just to jump in. Keldon Johnson is now very clearly the Spurs best player, right? Yeah, like I'm not, yeah, that's not yeah. a misconception. All it's right. Just want to make sure nothing about that, but All sneaking right. it up really close behind him and hot take time. I think he may challenge KJ for that man spot in the roster. And that's Devin Vassell. Uh, th th this kid has something and not to, not to knock anything on KJ. KJ is a good player. But Devin Vassell can do a little bit more things on the court that uh, KJ cannot. Uh, so we're not going to be surprised to see him, Devin Vassell, really take a big leap forward next season. But KJ is the man. They're paying him like the man. Uh, we'll see. You know, the, the office is going to flow through him. The defense is probably going to start with him. Everything's going to start with, with KJ and Devin. I've been told that those two guys have been already working out together by themselves uh, in this offseason. Just them two. So it looks like they're going to try to get on the same page, work things out, and really take the reins as the next leaders of this team. But still, Jackson, yeah, I mean, not enough. Not enough. I mean, it, look, if, they, if the Spurs can trade uh, DeJounte, and they, I, I say, yeah, these, there's nobody on this roster that is still untouchable at all. No. If, if somebody makes an offer for KJ, and if it's a great offer, like this guy for DeJounte, I think the Spurs will do it. Um, they're, they're, they're at this point of their franchise history of really trying to get us into being uh, well it's getting back to the cream of the crop of the yeah they're, they're they're nice pieces they're good to have yeah. but if the right offer comes along yes. nobody's untouchable at this point nobody's untouchable nobody is I mean I I mean you know a lot of Spurs fans are high on Josh primo I'm still yeah jury's still out then that's my opinion I mean okay he's shown something but let's see what he's really going to do next this upcoming season so expectation for josh primo is still in that incomplete mode i need to see him really get extended minutes and we're going to get that next season uh i, I think a uh, trey jones may come out as you know perhaps the season long starting point guard there's a bit of a point guard controversy right now in san antonio is it going to be trey jones is it going to be josh primo uh i i tend to lean towards trey jones I think Josh Primo can play at least three positions because we forget we forget that Primo and a good handful of these guys in the roster are teenagers. The Spurs are having a teenagers on They're the roster. They're just kids. <laughs> They're kids on the roster. The other day I was doing lockdown Spurs with a, with his uh, with a guest, and we we're going down the roster. Jackson, I swear, I, about three names in, I stopped in lock on the show. I said, "Who is this roster?" I was saying. Jordan Hall, Dominic Barlow. <laughs> what is going on in San Antonio? So, yeah, it's, it's definitely a transition for the Spurs. Uh, I think Jakob Pertl, he's he is who he is at this point of his NBA career. He's a good defensive guy. He's going to do a lot of the cleanup work. 
again, not, I will be more surprised if he ends the season in San Antonio colors. Uh, I think I expect him to be gone by trade deadline. Uh, yeah, it is just a big period of transition. And then, of course, you, know, you, you can't forget about Popovich. I mean, could he be the last big transition key after this season? Uh, you know, they brought in Brett Brown on the coaching staff. Yeah, he's back on the Spurs bench. Uh, could they be just shaking off the coaching rust for him? He's gone through a rebuild before in Philadelphia. You know, he's going to do it again in San Antonio. So could they just getting him, you know, getting geared up to take the uh, take the reins once Pop decides to uh, call it a day? I don't know. Don't know. But, yeah, it's times are changing in San Antonio, or should they say they've already changed? Because, yeah, there's going to be a lot of L's racked up. And, and, and Jackson, have, I know you probably, I mean, I, I don't, we're not going to blame you if you haven't, but the Spurs month, opening month schedule, I mean, you might as well just give them the first round pick already, you know, give them number one slot. I mean, they're going, they're going to go through a gauntlet. I, there's fans that think that they may start the season 0 and 15, 0 and 20. So hey, look, like, look, the, the Rockets started geez. one in 15 last year. And so, um, you know, it's it's distinctly possible. And if that happens, yeah. your chances of finishing somewhere in the top five or even top yeah. three, uh, you know, increase exponentially. I think if you mm -hmm. if you manage to get off through that bad of a start with your NBA season. Mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So it's going to be a lean season for the Spurs. But hopefully the, at the end of the day, the light of the end of the tunnel is um, is a Wimbanyama is a scoot or is another prospect that could possibly fall within the top three, top five picks. The Spurs need that. They they need a corner piece. They don't have that right now. Uh, look, even during the Spurs' dominant decades, I never saw a free agent say, I want to give up my payday and go win titles with Tim Duncan, Tony, and Manu. That never happened. You know, you know historically, the, there's only been one, one major free agent to come to San Antonio, and his name was LaMarcus Aldridge historically so they got to do something and the the only way they've shown it is via the draft so yeah but they but they've had a lot of success in the draft so things should you know if you're a spurs fan you should be very optimistic about their ability to yeah. build through the draft mm -hmm. but you bring up a good point there you mentioned the the spurs legendary big three there mm -hmm. mono ginobili recently being inducted into the yeah. basketball hall of fame what did manu mean to San Antonio to Spurs basketball and to, and to, to basketball as a whole, right. As a global ambassador right. for the sport. Yeah. I was very uh, glad and honored uh, that I was able to attend the hall of fame induction ceremony Friday and Saturday, both, both days. I was there in person, got to talk with Mono Ginobili uh, on Friday in the presser. And, and thank goodness he understood what I meant because I'm not dumb. Uh, I remember asking him Jackson, uh, you know, they picked you know, they know how the, the NBA works or the Hall of Fame you know, work. They, oh, they have to be selected to ask questions. You can't just grab a mic and ask. So they selected me. And first of all, I got nervous. I'm like, oh, my God, I'm talking to Manu Ginobili. So then I just said, hey, Manu, why Tim Duncan? Look, I know you got to be an NBA I'm a basketball Hall of Famer to present um, a person like Tim Duncan. So I asked Manu, go, so, so why Timmy? And he goes, oh, because he's, a, he's already inducted and you can only have a presenter that's been in the hall of fame, but I get what you're trying to say yeah, Jeff. And so he kind of saved me there, but so why I bring up this story is because what he's meant to San Antonio, first of all, we'll start off locally, then globally, locally, he's always been good with the media, you know, willing to go above and beyond, you, you know, he represented the Spurs brand tremendously, never really had any off the court waves or bad headlines, nothing like that uh, on the court was just a dynamo, there's a saying in San Antonio, the greatest spur ever is Tim Duncan. The most beloved is Mono Ginobili. So, yeah, he, he touched the uh, fans' hearts uh, with his energy, with his spirit, his competitiveness. Uh, he mentioned during uh, the press conference on Friday, and, and I think he did mention it. Uh, I think he did. But if he didn't, well, this is what he said. He said that he hates that he is so competitive. He said it's not the right way to live. But that competitiveness got him four NBA titles, got him an Olympic gold medal, got him an Italian league MVP, uh, got him a Euro league title. So, yeah, I, I mean, he is just that global stamp that he left on the league, on the world of basketball is tremendous. You look at Gordon Hayward. There's a reason why he wears number 20. That's his favorite player. It's Mono Ginobili. Uh, Kyrie Irving, James Harden, 
they all say, yeah, we got our Euro step from Manu. So he, he, you know, he's, she's, she's, I mean, there's just so many moments he had on the court from the James Harden block. I had to bring it up, Jackson. Sorry. To, uh, to even to his final days where he had a dagger shot against the Celtics when Kyrie Irving was still wearing green and white. I mean, the, the memories that he brought to the court, off the court, um, you know, to his home country of Argentina, uh, it, it's just, just powerful. And, you know, who knows? Maybe next year there'll be one more spur that the end of the big three, that is Tony Parker. So, yeah, it was great to be a part of that uh, Springfield Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame ceremony with Mono Ginobili. By the way, if you ever do it, Jackson, just to give you a little uh, heads up, the actual Hall of Fame ceremony is not at the Basketball Hall of Fame itself. I learned that the hard way when you walked in there and I'm thinking, all right, I'm here, everybody. Where do I go see Mono get enshrined? And security says, yeah, you're in the wrong area. You got to go down the street about five minutes away from here. So don't do that rookie mistake I did. Hey, I appreciate the advice, Jeff. Yeah. I, you know, I'll take that to heart if I'm ever able to have the honor, the privilege to be in attendance for a Hall of Fame induction ceremony. But what happens this next season with the Spurs? What do they look like as far <laughs> as just being on the ground floor of the rebuild? Is yeah. Brett Brown the new head coach in waiting, possibly, behind Craig Popovich? You're going to have us cover for all that and more over at Locked on Spurs. Jeff, I appreciate you stopping by Locked on NBA with me. Anytime.